welcome everybody to Nigu TV, especially episode of Chatting with Cade. Cade, how are you, buddy? Doing good. Wow, man, we love you. Cade is one of our junior ambassadors and represents us all around the United States, talking to all types of groups and inspiring them to never ever give up. He's a huge inspiration to the Jesse Reese Foundation, but he's also a huge inspiration to our guest today, the one and only Jordan Palmer. Hey, JP. How are we doing? We're doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and you are spot on. Huge inspiration to me and a lot of the, uh, the guys that I get to work out with. So, JP, for those that are watching and wondering who Jordan Palmer is, give a little context to who you are what you do. Yeah, so I'm a father of uh, two little boys. I got a four-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, I played uh, college football. I played in the NFL. I played on six different teams, played quarterback. And, um, and for the last, you know, 10, 15 years, I've been coaching quarterbacks, high school guys, middle school guys. Um, and I've even got to work with some, some college players who've had a ton of success. Uh, I've worked with a lot of guys, getting them ready for the NFL, for the draft. And, uh, and I've worked with a lot of, uh, and, and worked today with a lot of uh, current NFL quarterbacks. And so kind of helping all these quarterbacks to navigate their journey and uh, super fun. So I get to coach during the off season. And then during the season, um, I get to be a, a game analyst for Fox for college football games. So super fun. Super that fun. is so great. And, and I know um, another person that you have coached is our host, Kate. I have. Well, Cade's unique, though, so it's different. Cade's not just like any of these quarterbacks who come through here can drop dimes and win games. Not just like any of those guys. Cade is – I've coached Cade, but Cade has also coached with me. So he's also been out on the field, you know, with these other guys. And, and he's kind of been my assistant coach, sometimes giving these guys reminders, hey, get your feet up, stand taller, finish all the way through. So Cade uh, – you know, my career, I was always playing and I was coaching. And um, – and uh, so Kate is kind of he's a junior ambassador for Nigu, but he's kind of like a junior ambassador for QB Summit, too. That's awesome. Well, Kate, let's start chatting, buddy. Yeah, so my first question is, um, you know, you started with Nigu from the beginning. I have two questions for you to start. The first question is, what drew you to Nigu? Well, that's a good question. I think it was just Jesse's story. Um, I thought it was really incredible. Um, I have a, a friend who's a mutual friend of, of Eric and I named Noah. And um, I was playing in the NFL and uh, I was raised by two great parents. So I was kind of always using my off days or even if I had an off day, I'd, I would do something in the community to give back. And so I had done a little bit of everything, you know, kind of volunteering like anybody. And, um, but the first time I would, had um, done a children's hospital visit. I, I was like, "Wow, this this really uh, impacted me. Feel really called um, to this community." And then a friend of mine, Noah, introduced me to Eric. And when I heard uh, Jesse's story, and I heard, um, you know, just um, the current kind of state of um, children's cancer and what everybody's going through, I said, "Wow, this is, I think, the thing that I want to be able to commit some some effort and some of a, you know, but really a portion of my heart to." And uh, not, not that any of the other charities or foundations or issues that need to be uh, addressed aren't, aren't as, as relevant, but this one was for me. And so um, really hearing Jesse's story, I always connected it to, um, I've been around so many uh, superstar athletes, uh, and mostly in football, but in other sports too. And, and it's, it's obvious the impact a famous athlete can make right? Like we're all sitting here watching the Michael Jordan documentary, right? And, um, and if Clayton Kershaw walked in to a regular office, a bunch of grown adults would stand up and say, can I take a picture with you? Will you sign this for me? Like, it's obvious that superstar athletes have an impact. But it's not that common that people your age, Cade, or Jesse's age actually have big impacts. It's just not that that's not that common. And so when I had seen that, little 11 year old girl was able to make that type of impact. Uh, I was drawn to that because I think it's, if you're a big famous quarterback, it's pretty easy to make an impact. Um, and so uh, I was always drawn to that and, and then getting to know the people, Eric and the family and, um, and everyone who's involved with the Jesse Reese foundation. And um, when I would, another thing is when I was playing, I was playing for the Jaguars. And so there was a Ronald McDonald house in Jacksonville 
Yeah, that's and right. So getting to know some of the folks at the Ronald McDonald House out there too, and uh, that was incredible. Well, JP, we love having you on our team, and you you are an incredible ambassador for us. So thank you. All right, Kate, what else? So my second question is: You see me? Um, I wear my new wristband when I and every time I look at it, I um, it inspires me to work harder in my therapies and in school. Why do you wear yours? For the same reason, I, I feel like, um, you know, we all there's all there's levels of of bad days or bad circumstances and challenging times and adversity. And there's levels to adversity, and um, and so for me, it is a constant reminder. Uh, for me, it's twofold. One, it's a constant reminder to never ever give up, regardless of what we're going through. And second, um, because of the work that I've done uh, with the foundation and uh, the work, you know, introducing a lot of different quarterbacks to um, to the idea of never ever giving up, and to Nigu, and to you know, introducing to people like you, it also holds me accountable to make sure that I'm always on and uh, and always kind of putting others first. And so, um, it's not an obligation; it's an honor, but it is a reminder um, that uh, that I'm on. That there's a set of eyes on me at all times, and um, and I want to make sure that uh, when I'm coming in contact with people that um, you know, I, I'm, I'm very present and um, I'm, uh, I'm being as helpful as possible. That's great. All right, Kate, give them another one. So you coach people, um, kids in high school and college and even NFL guys like Sam Darnold, Josh Allen, um, Kyle Allen, and even Joe Burrow. You say a lot about using your platform for, um, to, like, to influence others. Why is that important? Well, I think well, look, with the quarterbacks, it's different, right? I don't coach basketball guys. I don't coach volleyball, soccer. So with quarterbacks, it's different. And I tell quarterbacks all the time, you're not an athlete. You're not a football player. You're not at, at any level. If you're a quarterback, you're different, right? You know this, kid. You're different. I think quarterbacks uh, at young ages, let's say a junior in high school starting on varsity, right? And I'm not, this isn't enough to be like Sam Darnold, like superstar. It's just regular kid playing on varsity. Um, I think the quarterbacks get more quality reps at pressure, at adversity, at oven responsibility, at having to make decisions really quickly, at having to hold on to the consequences of the decisions that they made, more so than the basketball player or the kid who's awesome at math or the violinist, the quarterbacks get the most reps at like uh, more mature, almost adult like situations. Yeah. And so when you have that, that with, you know, like we've all heard, like with great, you know, great ability comes great responsibility and you can fill in any of those words that you want. But uh, with quarterbacks, they get a lot of reps. They get a lot of opportunities to grow up faster. And so when you do that, if you're not good at handling that, then somebody's probably going to beat you out. But if you are good at handling that, then you better do something with it. You better impact some people around you. And I always tell quarterbacks, I guarantee that there is one kid at your school who could benefit from being friends with the quarterback. And so it's an easy challenge. And uh, I remember, you know, the kid at my school, it was, it was uh, Dave Donovan. And, um, you know, we were really good friends back then and maintained a relationship and it was something that somebody put on my heart. And so I just feel like all quarterbacks, that's doable. But I also believe this, and you know this, kid. I also believe this about courageous kids and courageous siblings who have, have battled and, and have dealt with, you know, pediatric cancer, where if you're, you know, how old are you now, kid? I'm 14. 14. Okay. So with what you've been through in your life, that's not normal. No, no, no normal 14 year olds don't understand adversity like you and work ethic like you and toughness like you like they don't understand and it's not their fault but you have experienced more of that so I would challenge you that as you grow up and adversity hits you better attack it just like you have attacked this and beaten this and so when you've been given a bunch of uh, of experience in something like quarterbacks have or like courageous kids have then it puts you in a position to, you know, beat the odds in the future and accomplish great things and battle through adversity and handle success. And so the things that you, that you get out of 
playing quarterback at a young age or the, or the things that, and I, I say it this way, the things that you get out of overcoming something like pediatric cancer, it almost gives you a superpower for the rest of your life to be able to overcome things. And so if that's the case, then better do something with it. You better be courageous for the rest of your life. It can't just be that only time that you were courageous. And with a quarterback, it can't just be that, and you know, when I was in high school, I was a leader and I was a great person and I worked really hard. Well, you better carry that on to the rest of your life. Um, and so I think that's why I was talking about guys using their platforms. So great. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, my other, my next question is, um, you, a big, um, playing quarterback is a big responsibility. Um, it's the biggest response. It's a big, it's the biggest position in any team sport. Um, what's the, the, um, biggest, um, quality of a quarterback? I think the number one attribute in a quarterback is, and it's been a lot of different things, right? Different things get celebrated, right? People talk about arm strength. We talk about how fast that guy is, or he's so tall or whatever, right? Or that guy's hands are so small, right? The guy in the green shirt behind you, right? His hands are so small. Yeah, they're big enough to hold a Heisman. And, uh, but I think confidence is the most important trait. And look, quarterbacks, there's 11 guys on offense. There's 11 guys on defense. There's a lot of different elements at play. Weather can affect you. Injuries can affect you. If your whole offensive line is hurt, that's going to affect you, right? Um, coaches, play calls, the opponent. There's just so many variables. And so with quarterbacks, it's the toughest sport because when the ball's in your hands, it's all on you to make great decisions and do great things with the ball. But there's also a lot of things outside of your control that you don't actually have control over. Think about it like this. Think about a pitcher, okay? That's a difficult job, right? Everyone's looking at you, whatever. Well, pitchers, it, they always throw. It's always the same distance. The dude's only on the right or the left. There's only two places the batter can stand. Mm -hmm. And they throw when they want to throw. It's their turn. They want to hit pause for a second, take a breath. They can, right? Quarterbacks, they throw – when the guy comes open, there's all these teammates, there's all these elements at play. And so I think it's the most difficult position in sports because you have to control so much and there's, and there's still a bunch of things you can't control. And so I think it's just from a psychological stuff for how they like process and get rid of the bad play and move on to the next one. There's just so many elements there um, that when a player is really confident, uh, confident of what's of what they've done before and also confident in the moment when they don't know what's coming um, which is a lot of times um, because of that environment and that platform uh, confidence I think is that most important trait for quarterbacks and it's the uh, it's the, the commonality and you've been around a lot of my guys it's the commonality uh, of all these guys some of them are really nice and some they're all really humble uh, but they're all very confident yeah it's so true I remember just even when you know, Jess was young and, you know, Stacy and I were trying to figure out how, what are the, what are the attributes and stuff that we wanted our kids to grow up with? We always just wanted two things for them to be confident and compassionate. Um, you know, and so confidence is such a huge thing that will help, uh, help us all in life throughout our journey and stuff. But I definitely can see how a quarterback needs to be confident. Okay. What's next, bud? So, you know, my story, um, I have to go through a lot of hard times. What's the hardest time you have to um, overcome in sports? Um, well, you know, I've been cut a bunch. Um, I, uh, I had some schools I really wanted to go to, and I only had one scholarship offer coming out of high school and was let down a little bit. But, um, you know, I had a time when, and it's all relative, right? Uh, I've had a, been really blessed, so I haven't had any crazy catastrophes happen in my life. Um, but I was really excited about the opportunity that I had with the Chicago Bears. Um, I was the backup quarterback going into an offseason. Everything was coming together perfectly. Uh, I was on a one-year deal, so uh, one year left on my deal, so it was, it was good from a contract standpoint. I was backing up Jay Cutler, who had gotten hurt every year for the five years preceding that. Um, and then had I, you know, I'm looking into the season going, well, what if, if he does get hurt and I do go in there, I had Brandon Marshall, Alshon Jeffrey, Martellus Bennett, and Matt Forte, and three Pro Bowl offensive linemen. And I'm sitting here going, this might be the best offense in the league if I go in. <laughs> um, 
And uh, I was playing for a coach that I still to this day say is the most brilliant mind I've ever been around in football. And he had a lot of, a lot of uh, compassion for me and was really a champion for me. And, um, and everything was going great all off season. I was, I was uh, playing better than the other guys around me and really kind of earning the respect of the team and everything was coming in together perfectly. And I just, I tore my pack one day. I have no idea. Still to this day, I cannot figure out why. Um, I coach quarterbacks on biomechanics. I can't tell you what I was. I've never been in better shape. I've never worked harder at that point in my life. I'd never completely gone all in like that before for this opportunity. And, uh, and it was just kind of how everything ended for me. And wow. it was just this weird, unexplicable thing. Um, and the biggest lesson that I got from it is you can do everything the right way and it can still not go your way. And the competitor in me, you know, I, I rehab and I tried to come back and I just, you know, it, it didn't work out for me, but like you can, the competitor, you can be frustrated and you can be down, you can be those things, but at the same point, um, you also have to put everything in, into perspective and go, how am I going to learn from this? What am I going to do with this? And the reality is, is that going through that scenario has allowed me to be able to speak truth into people who are going through a different version of the same thing. Yeah. Some opportunity that they thought was theirs that was ripped out of their hands. And um, so it allows me to be able to speak into that because I've lived it, not because I read about it in a book or heard somebody on a podcast talk about it. Uh, I lived it. I know that pain. Um, and, uh, and so, um, if I could do it all over again and have the same thing happen again, I wouldn't, I would have not hurt my pack and started and made a bunch of money. I would have gone that route. But if it did have to happen again, uh, I would want to handle it the way that I did handle it. Great answer. All right, Cade, what do you got? What would you say to a four, like I'm 14. What would you say to a 14 year old that his dream is to play in the NFL? Um, I would say this, if your dream is to play in the NFL, you can in the next year or two, figure out if that is even on the table for you. In, in one or two years, you can even you can figure out if, it, if you're even capable of doing it. And it actually has nothing to do physical. Okay, I'm not saying in a year or two, you could go to the NFL. I'm saying in a year or two, you could definitively say, you know what? I'm not, that's not my goal. I'm not going to go there. Or I want to go after this and we'll see what happens. It has nothing to do with how big, fast, strong, or how well you throw any of that stuff. I'll tell you a story, okay? Yeah. So I have a little pug named PETA. There she is. Yeah. Okay, and this is PETA. PETA, say hi. <laughs> yeah. So PETA is, is 13 years old, coming up on 13. It's old for a pug. So 13 years ago, she was a puppy, and I was living in Cincinnati. I was playing for the Bengals. And my brother at the time was playing for the Bengals too. And he had an attack train dog. It was a Rottweiler and it was a guard dog. And we went to pick up, um, we had an away game. So we both had dropped our dogs off at, with his dog trainer at their, they had like a kennel, you know, they keep them over the weekend. And so I was joking around with the dog trainer. We were picked up PETA. She's there sniffing me, wagging her tail, all that stuff. And Carson's dogs chasing balls. And, uh, and I made a joke to the dog trainer and I said, Hey, could you attack train PETA? Like, could you teach PETA to be a guard dog? And she's like a 13 pound pug. Right. <laughs> and he goes, there's this Russian big buff guy, uh, trainer. And he says, hold on. And he walks away, grabs a little squeaky ball mm -hmm. and he squeaks it like squeak, 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 squeaks it. And he throws it and PETA takes off after it to go get it. And he goes, yes. Go, what are you talking about? He goes, if she wants to go chase the ball, I can teach her to do anything that she's capable of. If she doesn't want to chase the ball, nope. Powerful. And so it's really, do you want it? For example, if you're 14 and I say, hey, here's three drills you should do before you go to sleep at night. Well, if you forget to do them or like still playing video games, it's kind of late, or I'll just do it tomorrow, then I'll just I'll save you the time and effort and your parents the money you're not gonna make it. It's too competitive. You have to want it. You have to be willing to do other things. And case in point, there are guys in the NFL who don't throw it that good, who aren't that big, 
Mm-hmm. We've got five eleven guys winning Heisman's, going number one overall. Baker Mayfield was a walk on at two schools. Tua Tagovailoa is a five eleven lefty with a broken hip. Like, yeah, it's not all about being tall and fast and strong and more athletic than everybody and having all these God given physical traits. It starts with, are you really willing to do what it takes? Yeah. Are you really serious about this? I'm all for being a kid and having fun and being 14, but are you willing to like put in all the work and do it? And Cade, you've been around some of the guys that come through QB Summit, like Cade McNamara's, who are yeah. really actually willing to do whatever it takes to make it. So the reality is, you probably will. Yeah, that's awesome. Great, great words of advice. All right, Cade. Now I have some fun questions. <laughs> oh man, oh, those were fun. So all right, what do you got here? <laughs> What time do you set your alarm? You know, it's really cool. I've been able to save some money on an alarm clock. I don't own an alarm clock because I have uh, two alarm clocks. They, they sleep in separate rooms. One's name's Ford and one's name's Reese. They're two little boys. And they, uh, the Ford alarm clock's been going off at six lately. Uh, but the Reese alarm clock's been known to go off, uh, you know, at 5.15, 5.30. So... I don't really have alarm clocks. I got two little kids. I'm sure you did it and your sister did too. Creep into the room to wake us up. Uh, that's awesome. And my last question is, um, I see you throwing with the guys um, playing quarterback um, at J. Sarah. When are you coming out of retirement? <laughs> oh, I would love to. If you can find me a team that would want to sign me, I'll come out of retirement yesterday. I'm all in. As long as I don't have to get tackled though. I don't want to get tackled anymore. <laughs> uh, I fell on my skateboard the other day and it reminded me how much I don't like getting hurt and being tackled and limping around. So um, I'm down to play. If there's a professional seven on seven league, professional flag football deal, you should sign me up. <laughs> well, Jordan, on behalf of the Jesse Reese Foundation and Supercade, uh, thank you so much for all you do for kids fighting cancer. Um, you have helped us form the foundation that we have today. Um, We would not be able to have uh, some of the incredible all-stars that we have that are showing up on covers of Sports Illustrated if it wasn't for you. So we are so grateful for your heart, your commitment, your family, and your your compassion towards kids fighting cancer. And uh, we just wanna also use this time to say thank you to you. And we can't wait Uh, to see you back in the hospital at some time in the future, because I know you love to go visit the kids and encourage them. But in the meantime, stay safe, and uh, we'll see you soon. Cade, thank you again for being an awesome host. Um, You're just such an inspiration to all of us, and so thank you again so, so much. Thank you. Jordan, again. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Um, You guys are uh, leaders in my life. Cade, you, man, you're, you're a leader, man. Um, so it's awesome. I love having you guys being involved with everything you guys are doing and, and, um, yeah, I'm excited to get back to normal life and, uh, Caden, get out there and spin it again, man. Yeah. Sounds great guys. Thanks so much for having us. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye.